Jim here again with Jim's Hot Rods and Beyond. Uh, this is the real deal. I, I can't stress any more than that. There is people on YouTube, they just can't. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I go around, I look at everybody's videos, and they're either lying to you uh, or they're getting money given to them. I don't know why people send uh, uh, products to people. I don't get that. I, I, nobody gives me anything, okay? I spend thousands upon the... You, you don't even want one of my cars. I, I have literally over $100,000 cash money out of my bank into that car. No one gives me anything, okay? I don't understand what people are doing on YouTube. So, therefore, this is where this is going. I have to scoot down low because this car is only about 10 inches off the ground. We're going to talk about this here. Uh, front clip there was no provisions for a radiator for this car because this car uh, I think there's only about three feet of the original Model T in it <laughs> so everything else was hand fabricated all I did was repair this car it was raced on the board uh, back in the 50s or something like that I bought this car from a a guy that was uh, right around 91 years old. This was literally, I have the pictures, me and my wife picked this car up in four feet of grass. This was a field car. Uh, the only thing I seen when we walked around the corner was two eyeballs with the old California custom headlights. Everything on this car when I picked it up was chrome plated. Um, it was pre-wired for a flathead. So now we have a Buick engine in it. If you watch the videos, You'll know what's going on, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't film everything in detail because well, everybody else seems to be doing that. So but here's some detail and food for thought on these cars. Traditionally, a T-bucket radiator mounts in front of the engine behind the forward cross member. Uh, well, this car is not a traditional T-bucket. Uh, somebody used a C channel to shorten and narrow this frame. So getting a custom application radiator would either custom making it myself with a TIG welder, which I could do. So I actually went the route and bought a champion traditional T-bucket radiator that measures, I believe it's 20, 21 inches by 24 to center to the bottom. And it's got these nice little tabs on it. So I've been trying to figure out, it won't fit between the engine. I'm going to show you that. So you can see, you see how close this is to my blower pulley? I only have three inches of space. This engine is going to require at least a three core. These freaking radiators, well they measure like four an eighth with this little wing and matter of fact some of the welds when they TIG weld these these things are, are thick some of them are a half inch thick out this way so as soon as I lowered so I have some foam protecting the grill so when I lowered this thing in there it was hitting right here and was actually touching my blower pulley so that's not going to happen. So I came up with this idea of making these wings. By the way, everything's going to be paint. This is all going to be uh, these. Here's the thing. I thought this thing was painted, you know. I thought this whole thing was going to be painted. And uh, everything was going to be good. Don't mind me with this hand camera trick. Let me get out of the way. I thought I finished everything on this for paint. Come to find out, uh, I didn't have a radiator, so I couldn't paint the front grill. I'm gonna. I'm actually using a 35 Ford um, grill, uh, an original piece that I had acquired from a salvage yard, because I wanted the shape. I don't care about the grill. Uh, you'll see what I'm gonna do with the grill for that eventually. So I got that thing down there, patched up the, the holes in it. 
uh, for the radiator cap and the trim on it. So that's all done. I made these brackets because the radiator has to go in front of the leaf spring. Now, this is an original, uh, well, it's a 38 Ford front end, front radius rods and stuff like that, and it's a spring forward. Most traditional T buckets today are spring behind, and that's not really correct. Uh, I've looked around on the internet. I've seen some original cars. I know one guy that he has an all steel T, and the spring is this forward. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the whole thing. The geometry is all weird and shit like that in a lot of these cars. They just don't drive right. So you go on YouTube and you type in T bucket and you watch some of these guys with the GoPros on the front of their, they either mounted on the engine or the windshield frame. And as they're driving, you can see this radiator bouncing back and forth. I mean, it literally is like dancing. Well, I don't understand that. Because originally they don't do that. They're mounted hard. Uh, the shell is mounted to that. If uh, I might even put a, uh, a split hood back on this. I haven't decided yet. But this, they're not supposed to do that. Okay, I don't know what the hell's going on with you people. Uh, this radiator with the brackets that I had made. And by the way, everything on... Everything on these uh, these bolts. Right now, this is just mock-up so I can get this thing and get my radiator hoses cut. Uh, all the bolts and hardware for this, I hand make. They're, they're solid stainless steel, fine for it. Uh, machine polished. I, I do everything here in-house. I don't go buy these things uh, polished. I mean, these things would cost you 25 to, uh, 30 bucks a piece if they were totally done. So I, I make them from scratch. And um, since I've seen them videos, one particular, it was the Grand Nationals of 2018 for the tea buckets. The, the, liter the car is literally shaking the radiator. And I can't see you going very far without that thing falling out because it's either going to break welds. And these champion radiators, you got to think aluminum is TIG welded. Yeah, it's a strong seal. But under vibration, welds crack. I, I guarantee you that's going to crack. Any In a brass radiator, that's even ridiculous. They're, they're just soldered together. They're just going to swell, um, fracture, whatever. So everything holding this thing on is half-inch hardware. Solid uh, stainless steel. The brackets that I made, uh, I drilled and tapped through the front cross member, which is over uh, a half-inch thick. So you can imagine how hot. I actually... Uh, hurt my hand trying to thread it but those are done I did this in the last two nights made these brackets out of uh, hot rolled half inch steel used three one inch half inch biscuits and then a three eighths hot rolled uh, plate welded it all together after I clamped it got this straight drilled it Again, half inch fine thread stainless steel hardware, two bolts per side. This thing is bomb proof, okay? There's no way this thing is gonna shake down on the road. And I know that these, these front end cars, because um, I, I think I have, uh, I have five solid axle uh, traditional cars, all original, and I drive three of them all the time. Uh, you don't see that on my videos except uh, some of the repairs that I do. Uh, my Econoline, that's a solid front axle. Nothing shakes in that. I mean, it's perfect. It's all original, and I just basically hot rodded it. Added some things here and there. Well, that's what I'm doing this car. I don't want this car shaking. Okay, this engine is scary. Very, very scary. Um, especially uh, when I put the uh, 15 and a half inch uh, race tires on this thing. It's just absolutely crazy. Actually, the, the front tires are 560 15s, which is a pretty uh, small tire. I, I've seen a lot of people driving uh, tinier. This this is a 4-inch contact. Some of them are 3-inch, but that's going to shake everything, you know. So, there you go. I made some brackets because uh, there's nobody doing this. Uh, it, 
And if you're gonna go this far doing all this, you might as well make it nice. So I'm gonna paint, I gotta paint these two brackets, the front grill shell, and I still have to paint uh, four fenders, but I don't know, I have the fenders, I don't know if I wanna put them back on traditionally, they had them on. Uh, tough guys don't drive fenders, I guess. I, I think that's a bunch of shit. I don't want a freaking rock hitting me in the eye. So uh, we gotta decide what to do with that. So I got like five things to paint left in this car. This car has been going on uh, nine years for me to put this thing together. Nine years. I still have no registration. The only thing it's insured. I do have insurance on everything. Uh, I got. I have original 26 plates that I want to put on this car. My wife says I should, but I shouldn't. I don't know. I, it's. Uh, but nobody's talking about this. This is a rush now because uh, I notice a lot of people are st uh, stealing uh, registration numbers. Th I have an original uh, number, engine number for this car because it came, it, you know, I had the flathead Ford in it. Uh, and don't forget, that's not a V8. That was a four-cylinder. So the, that's about it. So I'm really in a rush. I, I'm afraid that somebody's going to eventually just take a number from the Ford records and I won't be able to plate this car because I have a real I have a real bill of sales with a number so I should be good to go uh, that's about it I'll get back to another video on this have a good day